<laughs> okay, all the restless natives, you got to get back to your seat now. There we go. One of the, um, I guess, phases or uh, familiar parts of the Christmas story is the wise men. The three kings. Were there more? Were there less? You know. Anyway, we're gonna we're gonna work with the three. And I guess my thought for you this morning is to contemplate truly what they did. I mean, here they were. They were very well-off people living in a very distant land. And, and they knew something was happening because along with some of the other things that they studied, they also understood Scripture. And they, they understood that at some point during time, a king would be born. And the journey that they made really was quite, quite incredible. And if you've never really studied it, you should. Um, you know, go get some history books and, and find out. I mean, it was really an incredible journey. But think about it. They basically took who they were and everything that they had and they kind of laid it aside for a season of time. And, it, and, and they made a commitment to find the king. They made a, a definite concerted effort to go on a journey to find King Jesus. I would like to challenge each one of you as we uh, think about going into a new year. I would like to ask each of one of you to contemplate doing the same thing. Would you be willing to make a commitment to get a little bit closer to King Jesus this coming year? You know, I'm not talking about being religious. I'm not talking about playing some religious game. I'm not talking about uh, necessarily coming to church more often, although I would encourage that at any time. I love it when you're here. But I'm going to ask you to consider, as did the wise men, they brought three separate gifts to King Jesus. I'm going to ask you this coming year to make a commitment to give him three things. And, and I'm going to find those three things out of the book of Hebrews. If you'd like to turn there with me, I'll be in Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5. And I'm going to begin with verse number 7. And, and really, I'd like for you to write down the reference of this scripture or remember it. Or watch it on the internet when we get the thing uploaded onto the website. What page is it? I don't know. What page is it in our, in our Bibles here, in the Pew Bibles? 848. Page 848, buddy. 848. Thank you for asking. It's time to listen to a story about what we're going to do and the gifts that we're going to bring Jesus. So anyway, here's what we read. During the days of Jesus' life on earth. Now remember, who is Jesus? Son of God. Okay, he's the Son of God. Fully God. And fully what? Human. Alright? So here he is. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, listen, he offered up what? Prayers. Prayers. He offered up prayers and petitions with loud cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Now let's just think about that for a second. And I'm just going to ask you some questions. 
When is the last time, seriously, when is the last time that you found yourself praying so fervently that you found yourself on your knees weeping before God? Either because of something that's going on in your own life or on behalf of someone else. Now, just to, just to be honest with you, I don't always pray like that. I've prayed like that for Janet several times. I've prayed like that for my kids. I've prayed like that for this church. I mean, there's wet stains up here to prove it. But seriously, if, if the Son of God, if Jesus Christ Himself had to pray like this in order to make it through life, then who are we to think that we're going to successfully get through this life without a fervent and meaningful and real prayer life? So here's the first thing that I'm going to ask you to give to Jesus this year. Would you give him this present? Would you be willing simply to say each and every day, I'm going to pray for at least 30 minutes. I'm going to pray for a half an hour. And, and that can be, hey, I'm going to do 15 minutes in the morning. I'm going to do 15 minutes at night. I'm going to just do a power half hour in the morning. Whatever it is, I'm talking about where you shut the radio's off, you shut down the TV, you don't answer the cell phone, whatever it is, quiet time, where you just simply spend time praying with the Lord. And I know, I hear you already thinking, but I don't have time. I have a suggestion. Everybody's TV remote has an off button. Shut that thing off. And give him a half an hour of prayer. It'll change your life. It will change your life. Okay, so that's gift number one. Let's read on. Although he was a son, in verse 8, and, and if you are the type of people that like to mark in your Bibles, I suggest then that you circle these next two words. It says, although he was a son, listen, he learned. Oh, here he is. Hello. It's Jesus Christ. It's the Son of God. Although he is the Son of God, it says that he learned obedience through the things that he suffered. Wow. I thought Jesus was the Son of God. I thought God already knew everything. Those things are all true. But listen, when he wrapped himself in humanity and showed up as a baby in a manger, he was completely dependent on mom and dad to feed him, to nurture him, to let him grow as a, as a young lad, as a toddler. And, and he grew into a young man. And then we pick up the rest of the story at around age 27. But it says that he learned things. He learned to be obedient through the things that he suffered. Um, how many of you have gone through difficult times in your life? Whether it be through an illness, whether it be through a season of unemployment. I mean, we've all experienced tough stuff. Listen, gift number two. Would you see God's hand moving during the, t the hard times and would you learn to be obedient? Would you give Him that gift? Would you, instead of getting angry, instead of getting frustrated, instead of getting mad, why is all this bad stuff happened to me? Or who was it? Charlie Brown in the song? Why is everybody always picking on me? We can have a better attitude about that, can't we? 
We can learn through the difficult times not to run away from God, not to get mad at God, not to question where were you in all of this. But listen, we can learn to become more obedient to what He says. I think that's a simple request. A simple thing that you could give to Jesus. Hey, I'm going to give Jesus some gifts this year. It's His birthday anyway, right? Mm -hmm. we're, we're supposed to be giving Him gifts. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's give Him the gift of obedience. Let's just not know about His Word. Let's not just talk, Oh yeah, hey, I'm, I'm a Christian. I'll go to First Baptist Church, New Bethlehem, PA. Yeah, let's live it. Let's be people who, you know, listen, I don't care about the clothes that you wear on Sunday morning. I, you know, I wear a suit not to try to impress you, but because in my feeble mind, in my humble way of understanding things, I was taught that dressing up is a way of demonstrating respect. I mean, why does a lawyer go into a courtroom dressed up in a suit and refer to the judge as your honor? It's not a law. It's a, it's a way of that lawyer demonstrating respect to a higher authority. And so for me, you know, I know that the new fad and the new trend is preachers are preaching in blue jeans and tennis shoes. By the way, I wore my tennis shoes last night. I did. I had my white tennies on. And, and the building didn't fall down. But that's because my feet were hurting and my back's been hurting. And I was more comfortable in my white tennies. But listen... I, I don't look at that and, and, and judge anybody for that. I, 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 I don't care when you wear shorts. That's cool. I, I want you to come the way you feel comfortable worshiping the Lord. But for me, this is just my way of, of just saying, Hey, Lord, you know what? I, I'm going to give you my best. And so, but that's me. That's just how God has convicted me. That doesn't mean you have to feel like that. But that's the reason I wear a suit. It's part of my way of trying to be reverently submissive to God. Remember, that's why Jesus' prayers were answered. Mm -hmm. When you're praying, you should be reverent. And you should submit to the authority of God. That was gift number one. Gift number two, hey, be obedient to what the Word says. Just give Him that gift this year. Just be obedient to what it says. Let's read on and see what gift number three will be. It says, verse 8, Although He was a son, He learned obedience from what He suffered. And once made perfect, He became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey Him. And was designated by God to be high priest in the order of Melchizedek. By the way, I'm going to skip to the end. If you're faithful to do these three things that I'm going to ask you, then guess what? God will use you to be the source of life to a dead world. You see, Jesus isn't walking on the earth anymore, is he? And so, you know, Jesus Christ is not here in the flesh. But listen, when, when good people like yourselves get serious about serving the Lord and just following this simple plan, then that's when God starts to use you as the source of life to those people. I mean, look at them in Walmart. Their eyes are empty. They're looking for something. They're desperately in search of meaning of life. I mean, there's people out with, with working with Ryan that are making tons of money that are miserable inside. They just can't wait till the time clock says it's quitting time so they can just go and numb it all with, with alcohol or with, you know, whatever they're into. Some people get their thrills. I know a guy in Brookville, very successful businessman. They had to take the lottery tickets out of his store because he has a gambling problem. He owns a store. Okay? And, and his employees thought enough of him working with his wife that they removed lottery tickets. Because what? They know the man has a gambling problem. What's he looking for? He's something's inside of him churning. He's miserable and he's trying to find happiness and fulfillment by some outside exterior source. 
And guess what, people? It's not there. The only way that we're ever going to be truly happy in the Lord is when we have it settled right here. We let what's in here travel the longest journey of life, the 18 inches down into our heart. When our talk becomes our walk. Okay, when we let what God's Word has said to us penetrate into the way that we live our lives. That's being obedient. Okay, and when you do that, then God uses you. I mean, let me tell you something. I don't know if you, how many of you were here last night? How many of your hearts were touched? <laughs> here it was. And, and, and I'm only using this as an example. Just to show you, just to give you an example. And many of you have done the same thing. But I called the Gagnon family. And I said, listen, God's given me an idea. Would you be willing to be used? Well, we really had plans for Christmas Eve, but let us think about it. Lenny calls me back. Hey, I talked to Jess. We prayed about it. Yeah, we'll be there. We'll switch things around and we'll, we'll be there. I mean, I, I preached. I thought it was a pretty good message. Be silent. We talked about, you know, quieting the noise of the world so that we could hear the voice of the Lord. It was okay. But then here it was. Six-year-old little Ashley. She came and sat on this chair. And she read out of Isaiah. She read out of Luke. She read out of Matthew. King James Version. And she read the Christmas story out of the Bible. As the sisters... As she was reading about the various characters, they brought up and set the pieces of the manger scene in place. And I, I see, I had the advantage. I was up here. I'm telling you, at least 50% of the folks were teary-eyed. I mean, it was just beautiful. And so after the service, I went over to Lenny and Jess and I said, hey, thank you. Because God used your family to be a blessing to these people tonight. And that's what I'm saying. You see, that's how God works. He wants to use people to be a blessing. Listen, God has used Brenda to be a blessing to her entire family. Okay? I mean, she might not even know it. She might not even realize it. But any time I ever asked a family member... You know, who's doing this? What's going on? Well, let's check with Brenda because she's kind of keeping things organized and, you know, making trips and, and so forth and so on. And does that mean any of the other family wasn't playing an important role? Not at all. But she was willing to do that. You know, last week with Carl, you were a blessing to Carl. You took him to the hospital. He felt comfortable with you. You know, and I could just go around. How many times has God used Beth? To, to be a blessing to her family members. To, I mean, just you guys, you see what I'm getting at? God wants to use you in the life of, first of all, your church family, because we're here for each other. And second of all, to the world. We've got the truth. We've got the answer to life. It's not in the lottery tickets it's not on the horse races. It's not in the making thousands and millions of dollars. It's not in the alcohol. It's not at the bottom of a bottle. It's not in a can of snuff. It's not in a pack of cigarettes. You know, there is nothing external that's going to give us the peace that we can have when we get it right with God. That's what we have to offer to the world. I ain't picking on you either. Some of you who smoke, some of you who chew... Hey, that's between you and God. You want my opinion? You should quit. But timing is between you and God. I, I, I can speak that way because I've experienced it. But anyway, that's between you and the Lord. Here's, let's read on. This, this whole passage is about us growing up in the Lord. Okay, This whole passage is about us becoming mature Christians and, and not just little infants. Okay, So here we go. 
Verse 11 says, we have much to say about this. About what? About getting it right. About praying and about obeying his word. We have much to say about this. But it is hard to explain because you're slow to learn. In fact, though, by this time, you ought to be teachers. I mean, you guys have been saved long enough that you should be the ones teaching. It says you still need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's Word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, who by, and here it is, here's the two words to circle, who by what? By constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. What's the third thing that I want to ask you to give to the Lord this year? Constant use. What does that mean? It means the Bible comes down off the shelf more than just once a week to carry it to church. And I mean, hey, we've made it so easy. We got pew Bibles and a lot of times I put the scripture up on the, up on the wall. Uh, you know, a lot of us have gotten out of the habit of even carrying our Bibles to church. Here's even a sadder commentary. I'm not just talking about our church, but let's talk about the churches in the valley. If I was to ask each one sitting in the pews this morning, hey, where's your Bible? I'm not sure. I, I think it's at home somewhere. It's probably on my bookshelf. Or they don't know. Why don't they know? Because they're not using it. <laughs> you see, they're not reading it. We're not feeding ourselves. Have you ever seen a plant? If you stop watering it, what happens? It dries out. It dries out. And what happens to some of the leaves? It they begin to fall off. And, and, and you know what though? If you begin to water it and cut some of the dead stuff off, what happens? Miraculously, it grows, it grows back. The life is still there, but it needs to be fed. Okay? Hey, what happens to a Christian when you stop reading the Word of God? You start to get these stress lines on the top of your forehead because you're starting to be a little older and a little grumpier. And you start to be a little bit less fulfilled in life and pretty soon you're complaining more about the pastor than listening to him. And you're more concerned about him getting done at 1130 than what he had to say. And you're just sort of withering up. And you know what I mean? That's not what God has for us. Listen, I don't care if you're 87 years old. God wants to use you. Okay? How many of you are 87 years old? We got Chuck. We got fans. Hey, Chuck. Do you still, are you able to write with a pen? Could you afford a package of $2 thank you cards? Hey, 87 year old Chuck could be a, listen, how blessed do you think a business owner would be to receive in the mail a thank you card from somebody simply saying, hey, thanks for helping to keep Christ in Christmas. Would that be a way that you could encourage? See, there's stuff we can do, people. You're not done. You're not finished. There are things that God would have each and every one of us still be plugged in, still making a difference in people's lives, still bringing the joy and the excitement of the Lord Jesus Christ into the lives of a dead and dying world. But listen, I'm going to tell you, it's like having a, a pitcher. I don't have one. But pretend I got a big old pitcher in my hand. Listen, Kerry is at a place in his life sometime maybe where he needs a little drink of the living water. Guess what? If my cup is full, hey, we sing the song, don't we? Fill my cup, Lord, fill it up. I lift it up and all that, however it goes. Guess what? If my cup isn't full, how can I give him something to drink? I can't because I don't have anything. As a man, I got nothing. 
He might not even like me as a guy. You know, I mean, uh, we get along and, and stuff, but we don't really, you know, we've never spent hours and hours and hours hanging out and talking. We'd probably really like each other. I like sports, you like sports. You know, we'd probably, a lot that we could talk about and hang out. But here's what I know. I've always got something to give you if I'm where I need to be in Christ Jesus. I, I can always come alongside of you if your daughter's having surgery or if your mother-in-law's and I can always have an encouraging word to say, listen, I'm praying for you. You know what I mean? And, and that's the way it is with the world. It doesn't matter what the world is searching for. We can always be an encouragement if our cups are full. If we're where we are supposed to be with the Lord, listen, we will minister not out of making a real effort. Boy, it was a stretch, Pastor, but I wrote those cards that you said about. <laughs> no, it'll be like the overflow. It'll bubble out of us like, man, I couldn't help it. As soon as I went home, man, I, I went home and, and the store was closed on Christmas, but I went out on Tuesday. I bought those cards. Man, I couldn't help it. That was a great idea. The Lord just got inside of my mind and said, man, you got to do that. We'll be excited about serving the Lord. We'll be anxious to... I mean, I made, I made a text message because I didn't want it to have to be his deal all the time. And so I sent a text to Matt. I said, dude, I need somebody to come and put the risers back out in the shed because I can't lift them. Matt texted me back, I'll get a hold of Carrie and we'll take care of it. Wow! Man, you talk about an awesome... Oh, what a relief it was. Thank you. That was huge. Because I needed the thing ready for Christmas Eve and I couldn't make it happen by myself. I mean, there is stuff, people, that we can do. There are ways in which we can serve the Lord. And, and the third thing I'm going to ask you is to, to be in His Word. So I'm going to read on here. I'm back in my Hebrews. I'm back in my Hebrew scripture. Although you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk. Anyone who is or who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. And here it is. You want to get into the deeper things of God. You want to learn what it really means to, to be obedient, to follow Christ, to listen for His voice, to do His will. Here it is. But solid food is for the mature who by constant use, and we have those two words circled, have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. You want to know what the right thing for you to do is? You want to know what God's will for your life is? You're going to find it when you begin to get into His Word. Not just the little dribble of milk. See what I'm doing? I'm squirting milk out right now. I'm, I'm feeding you a little tidbit. And that's great. We want that. We want to come to church. We want to be fed. But here, if you really want to develop this, if you really want to get a hold of what I'm trying to say, then you're going to go home and you're going to open to Hebrews chapter 5. And you're going to spend the rest of this week studying this scripture. And you're going to be praying fervently to the Lord. God, let me hear your voice as I study your word. Lord, teach me what it is that you have for me to accomplish. Lord, show me who you want me to impact for Christ. Lord, let me know how I can put my hand to the task and be a blessing to the people at First Baptist Church. So you're going to pray. You're going to be obedient. And then the next thing I'm going to ask you to do, would you give them, pick a, pick a number. I'm going to let you off easy. I'm not even going to say, read the scripture for a half an hour every day. I'm going to say, listen, give them 15 minutes. Crack the book open. Begin to study. Where should I study, Pastor? Hey, the book of John. Just turn to the Gospel of John. Read through the Gospel of John. Let it become alive to you. And, 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 and if you have a study Bible, I have a Thompson chain. 
Learn how to study. You know, dig a little deeper in the well, boys, if you want a cool drink of water. That was a song, by the way. But learn to, learn to open God's Word and learn to, to read it. Learn to read it with ears that you want to understand it and that you want to let it make a difference in who you are. Hey, the wise men brought three gifts. I'm asking you to give him three gifts this year. Pray for a half an hour every day. Be obedient to what you already know his word says. Hey, some of you already know some things. Hey, there's a list of Ten Commandments. Hanging on the wall, how many of you understand the Ten Commandments? Thou shalt not steal, kill, all those things. <clears throat> some of us maybe need to make some adjustments just to get in line with that. Thou shalt not lie. Could be mean, thou shalt not cheat on your taxes. Thou shalt not... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You fill in the blanks. Thou shalt not illegally shoot a deer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hey, you're lying. Thou shalt not lie. Come on now. There's lots of legal ways to get a deer. So you're going to read for 30 minutes every day. You're going to be obedient to what this says. And you're going to study His Word. You're going to read His Word. I will guarantee you. I will make this guarantee to anybody. I'll look you square in the eyes and tell you. If you'll simply do those three things... You will be a new creature in Christ Jesus. It will radically change who you are. Amen. Shelly's going to come and lead us in a song and we're going to go and eat dinner and open presents and all the things that we do. And go home. It's done, man. It's over. This is just a little chorus that we're going to learn this morning. Um, if you want to go ahead and stand with me. Um, I'm going to sing it through, and then please join me in the second time. What can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part, yet what can I give him? I'll give him my heart. Let's sing it one more time. What can I give him, poor as I am? I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet what can I give him? I'll give him my heart. Father in heaven, Lord, make this real for us. Write this on the minds and the hearts of each one of these people in this place today. Lord, let us understand that you're real. You're alive. You have things for us to be a part of. You have ways for us to, to take Jesus Christ to the world. Lord, help us to understand that if we'll simply do these three things, Lord, if we'll pray every day, if we'll... Make a commitment to be obedient to the things that we already know that you have taught us. And Lord, if we'll read your Bible with the mindset of learning to hear your voice, that you will transform us and continue to mold us and shape us 
into the people who you've created us to be. Lord, I pray that you will change our hearts, that you will change our minds, and that you will impact us in such a way that we will walk out these doors different. Lord, that we will be committed to making a difference for Jesus Christ. Lord, I know that you're at work all around us. Help us to be a people that doesn't get caught up into all the negative things that are going on. But Lord, help us to see Jesus in the midst of chaos and confusion. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Merry Christmas. And I hope you have a blessed day. I hope you have lots of family time. And I hope you get everything on your Christmas list. You're dismissed.